Hi, I'm Nita, and if you're one of those people that get a bit starstruck, then watch out, because today we are talking about the most famous saws in the Silky Range. And I'm Sinead, and today we're going to break it down step by step for you. Today it's all about the Zubat handsaw. Now this has got to be the most popular handsaw in Australia for sure, in the world we are told. Uh, it is super super famous, anyone thinks of Silky they normally always think Zubat and if they've got a Zubat they can't possibly think of any other because <laughs> it's like their perfect match, their soulmate or soulmate in this situation. <laughs> but is it for everyone? Is it the saw for you? And that's what we're here today to help you figure out. Is, is the Zubat your saw? Now we're going to break it into a few sections so it makes it a bit easier. Sometimes people get a bit antsy because we kind of like rattle on sometimes and talk and talk and talk and don't get to the point you want to hear. So this video is going to be about a curved versus straight blade because your Zubat is a curved. Then we're going to talk about whether you want a fixed or a folding saw. Then we're going to hit what options of tooth. Then we're going to go blade length and then it is all over. So if one of those things you're after, that's going to be the order. Hopefully, we try and try and stick to our plan. Doesn't always work. Um, so you might want to fast forward to that section. So to get started, it's all over to Sinead. Yes. Curved versus straight source. So when we talk about what's the difference between a curved and a straight blade, it all comes down to what you are doing. So if some people think a straight blade's better, some th people think that curved blades are better. And yep. yes, you're right, depending on what you're doing. That's right. So, so everyone's right. It's all good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the Silky Zuba has a curved blade. So curved blades are designed to cut above your head mm -hmm. or below your waist. And that's because it comes down to ergonomics. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is that it's the way your arm naturally moves on that er angle. So like Sinead said, your arm naturally moves in a curved motion when you're cutting above your head and naturally moves in a curved motion when you're cutting below your waist. But when you're cutting in front of your body, the torso area, shoulders to waist, your arm actually naturally moves in a straight motion. So what you'll find is somebody will have a curved saw and they'll be pretty above their head going, oh, this is amazing, it's so quick, it feels so amazing, Zubats are brilliant, we love them, fastest saw in the world. And then you go and prune here and for some reason it's just not quite as good as it was when you were pruning above your head. And the reason for that is because your arm naturally moves straight, you'll end up putting pressure on the tip of the blade and the back of the blade, but you'll miss the middle of the blade. Mm. So this actually won't be cutting. So all of a sudden you've turned a 33 centimeter blade into like a 20 centimeter blade because that's the only teeth that are really digging material out of the branch you're, you're cutting. So you'll, you'll notice if you ever have used one, you might've done this yourself or you might've seen somebody else do it. They'll start cutting a branch here and then all of a sudden they'll start doing this weird kind of like rocking action where they're rocking the blade backwards and forwards. And that's because they're trying to get even pressure on all of those teeth. Um, and the problem with that is, other than you look really strange, um, <laughs> you end up getting like a really sore shoulder. So it's the opposite to ergonomics. It's not comfortable. It's not particularly good for you. So if over 50, 60% of your cutting is going to be in the torso area, you want to watch the video on the Gontaro saw. Yes. But if sort of 60 plus percent of the time you're going to be up here, and down there, you can probably cope with doing a little bit of rocking in the middle from time to time. <laughs> so 60 plus percent of the time on an angle, curved saw. 60 plus percent of the time in the middle, straight saw. Yes. Okay, so since you're still watching, I imagine that you have decided that a curved blade is the shape blade for you. So that's fantastic. Now we need to work out if a fixed saw like the Zubat is ideal for you or maybe you should go for something like a folding saw with a curved blade. Yes. So the difference between a fixed saw and a folding saw is kind of the obvious. A fixed saw blade is fixed in place. It is, if Sinead pulls it out for us, the blade is full tang so it goes all the way through the handle and then these red screws screw through the blade top and bottom there and hold it in place. So one of the benefits of that is when you use the saw, you're not supposed to put any pressure in the forward direction and therefore you're not supposed to bend the blade. Yep. But occasionally that happens, occasionally it might get pinched and you might put a tiny bit of forward pressure on. When that happens, 
the bending is absorbed through the handle section of the blade there and so it's less likely to get those stress fractures in there and yep. much much less likely to break a blade so when you're comparing a folding saw to a fixed saw harder to break blades easier to break blades yes uh, the other benefit of a fixed saw is you can see that's a 30 centimeter blade as this folding one is i'm just going to pop it there you can see same length blade the handle on the fixed saw is curved and shorter, obviously, than the handle on a folding saw. And that's because the handle on a folding saw has to accommodate the blade. So it has to be as long and a little bit longer than the blade itself yep. to accommodate it. Whereas a fixed saw goes in a sheath, and they always come with a sheath. Um, so that handle can be really shaped and a bit like Sinead was talking about earlier, ergonomics. Yep. So it's all about how the body works with the saw, comfort less fatigue, less stress, all those sorts of things. So Silky make the handles on the fixed saws really comfortable, sort of molded to the shape of the hand. They hook back, so because all the pressure's on that pull direction, yes. you're not gonna have your hands slip off the back of the handle. It's got that support with that little kickback there. So the benefit of a fixed saw is you get that molded handle that they just can't do as much in a folder because it has to be fairly straight to accommodate that blade and long. Yep. Um, the other thing to think about, some people want to use two hands when they use the saw, particularly if they're cutting bigger things, we're talking bigger teeth, then perhaps your fixed saw doesn't have that ability for you to comfortably put two hands on. So you might want to be thinking, folder gives me that ability to comfortably put two hands. So mm -hmm. you sort of have to think, what am I working with? And later we're going to talk about size teeth, size branches, all those sorts of things. So that's where you might want to sort of put two and two together with that one. <laughs> Otherwise, with a folder versus a fixed, like I said before, the blade goes into the handle of a folding saw, so always protected, quite compact. Your fixed saw, same length blade, same sort of thing these saws are going to do. Obviously, it's going to take up a bit more room. So if you're thinking, I need something for my backpack and I want to put it inside the pack, not outside the pack, yes. maybe a fold is the way you want to go. But if it's just for home, you want a really comfortable, really robust, really good saw to use, then a fixed saw is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic difference between a folding versus fixed. Yes. <laughs> In this picture here, you can see the extra large, the large, and the fine tooth blades. So when would we use a fine tooth, like fine is small, right? It's small teeth, so small, slow. Like, why would I want small? It's like cars, everything goes better uh, if it's bigger and red. And not this. in this case. No? <laughs> <laughs> not in this case. So. When it comes to your tooth size, nothing is too slow, you could say. So what I have in my hand here is the fine tooth blade. So fine teeth are great for, if you liken to it at to a carpentry uh, woodworking saw, finer the teeth, the drier, the harder, the branches. That's right, woodworking, like builders always have really tiny teeth, whether it's an electric saw, a big saw, yes. they're always really little teeth because it's dry hard stuff. Exactly, yeah. and that's the same when it comes to pruning saws as well. So the smaller the teeth, you can cut the drier, um, drier, dead branches basically. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, we've even had customers cutting stuff that isn't branches, but is dry and hard, like horns, um, yeah. bone, stuff yeah. like anything, but yeah, not too hard and dry. So obviously concrete is going to wreck it. So oh, yeah. <laughs> these are not concrete saws. <laughs> but otherwise, dry, hard material and little stuff. And little stuff as well. So if you're oh. pruning branches like the same size as my finger, then yeah, this is the way, this is the saw to go, basically. Um, and also just through a spanner in the works too, fibrous materials. Yes. Yes, so if you're cutting um, bamboo, mm -hmm. um, palm fronds, like cutting them down the size, and yep. the fine tooth saw is a lot easier and better to use. Mm -hmm. So when, the reason why we say that is because it's so fibrous, the teeth are so small, it's it's going to make it the cut a lot easier. So if you were your yeah, big use, teeth, the, the teeth sort of get stuck between the fibers and strings, <laughs> and so they kind of like end up getting caught like yes. this, whereas the little ones just slicing through like a knife. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that's the fine. Zubat fine tooth. Good try, and I might go a bit slower so you can see the cutting a bit slower. So that was the fine tooth Zubat. Large teeth 
teeth, especially with this size, it's 7.5 teeth per 3 centimetres, mm. which means it's a great general purpose saw. Yep. So if you're cutting um, fresh branches, um, like the same size as my wrist, yep. um, and bigger, like the same size as your arm here, then the large tooth is the way to go. It's a lot easier to And we're going to do some demos later. So yes. there will be demos at the end of the video, <laughs> or maybe when we edit it we'll change where we put them. But anyway, somewhere there will be demos showing you yes. how these work. So if you're after a general purpose saw, that is, and you're cutting 90% of the time you are cutting on angles, yes. then the Zubat large tooth is your saw. That's right. right. We now have the large tooth Zubat. The extra large tooth. So this one here has 5.5 teeth per mm -hmm. 3 centimeters, so it's huge. So we, when we say larger the teeth, the bigger the um, bigger the branch, but then also the faster the cut because mm -hmm. you've got those teeth ripping through that branch. <laughs> you can still cut smaller stuff, so you can, yeah. can still cut stuff, you know, like the arm um, yeah. and even down to the wrist, but you wouldn't want to be cutting little, little stuff. No. So what happens, so why not? I want the biggest teeth because I might cut something really big one day and I like fast, so wouldn't, what, what's going to happen if I cut something little like this with it? When it come, when it's little, because the teeth are so large, it's going to rip, it's not going to cut it's more gonna rip through so it's gonna mm. like it's gonna jump and nine times out of ten it's gonna land on your hand or your fingers and Had that happen yes it's not <laughs> ideal <laughs> so when you laziness are laziness is never a good idea no so when you are cutting branches like my finger then it's going yeah it's not gonna be a comfortable saw to use it's mm. just gonna be you gotta find it frustrating basically even if it's an inch wide it's still gonna be too small it's still gonna jump it's still gonna vibrate yes it's still going to fight you gotta think those big teeth they're hitting the edge of the branch every time you drag it through so it's dub, 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 yes as it's going through because it's kind of falling through the edge because <laughs> it's not a big surface that it's going through no. so yeah Especially when the teeth are this sharp too. All they want to do is sink into that branch and get the job done. Yeah. So, um, and obviously that's a beneficial um, point for you guys, but <laughs> not for small branches. <laughs> yeah. So easy rule, little teeth, little things, big teeth, big things, exception to the rule. Is fibrous or dry materials, like dry dead branches. So you mean if I've got a big dead branch, I go for big tooth. Big dead branch, you go with a long blade, fine tooth. But we'll get back to that soon. <laughs> That's right. So you'll see that when we do the demos. But yeah, the, the exception to the rule is if it's dry or hard, even if it's big, go fine tooth. Yes. And if it's super sappy, then go in between and go for large. So this is the Zubat large tooth on a rock hard dead bit of wood. Sorry, extra large too. starting our cut right at the handle because all silky saws are pull saws only so that means they only cut on that pull stroke mm. so you can see that we're using it like a normal saw however that cutting happens when we cut on that pull <laughs> So given the choice for this particular piece of wood, I would definitely go with the extra large tooth Zuba. I just made, that for me felt more comfortable. The large tooth was still fantastic as well. Um, but yeah, I love the feel of this one for that particular one for me. You have decided you are buying a curved fixed blade Zubat. So we've just discussed the tooth options, and um, now we're going to discuss the blade length. 
So if you have decided that you are after the fine tooth zoo bats, which tooth blade length you're going to choose, super, super easy. You're either going to choose the 330 or the 330. <laughs> so you can have, so I can have a 330 or a 330, can I? Yes, basically. Excellent. <laughs> There's only one blade length, which is a 33 centimeter blade. Making the decision super easy for you today. Exactly. You totally need a 330. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are going to the next one, the Zubat Large Tooth. So this one here, you have five different blade lengths. We went from super easy to a little bit harder. Yes. <laughs> So it is available in a 24 centimeter blade, a 27 centimeter blade, a 3, uh, 30 centimeter blade, 33, and 39. So, Nita, so why would you choose a the small blade? Okay, so um, I might just show you what that difference is. So we've got here, and probably in the process, make all the zoomers fall off the table. Okay, so there is quite a difference between a 39 and a 24. Yes. Okay, so why, why, why? Well, it all comes back to space. Space of what you're cutting and space of where you're storing it. Yes. So only you know how much space you've got to store it, so that should be pretty easy. Figure out if you're carrying it, if it's in a backpack, if it's in a vehicle, if it's in your shed. If it's in your shed, you're probably lucky you can have a big one. <laughs> now, ordinarily in this case, normally bigger is better because the longer the blade is, the faster your cut will be because in one stroke you've got more teeth going through the branch. So therefore the branch will be cut a lot faster. And as far as the branch is concerned, it's normally much happier with you using a longer blade because even though Silky have the most amazing teeth that give the smoothest, most beautiful cut you've ever, ever seen, the more times you go backwards and forwards with a blade, the more opportunity you have to maybe tweak the blade ever so slightly yep. and angle it differently and cause a little line or a little groove to be dug into the branch you're cutting. Now, for those of you that aren't sure what the problem with that is, well, certain trees tend to be more temperamental than others, but like people, um, and so they're more, more prone to infection. So the more lines you have dug in a fresh cut, the more surface area you have for dew and water to sit and therefore bacteria to get into that wound because unless you treat it with something, it takes a little while for it to create a protective seal itself to heal over and stop infection getting in. So you want as smooth a cut as possible and you'll achieve that with a silky saw but particularly with a silky saw that you don't have to drag through many times. So in that case, you're probably going, oh, well, we'll get the 390 because that's the longest, so problem solved. The only thing you have to factor in yes. is what are you cutting? So a lot of commercial growers, they will use the baby 240, and you know that might just seem ludicrous because they're a commercial grower, time is money, so obviously they want the quickest cut possible, but most of their trees are really compact, so their branches are really close together. And the problem is if you use a big long saw, when you've got a branch here and you've got a branch here, well, if you cut like this, you're gonna cut two or three branches at once, which is yeah. not what you want. So then what you'll end up doing is just using the tip of the blade so you don't injure the branch behind it. The problem with that is you can't be as accurate, you can't be as controlled when you're just focusing on the tip of the blade and you're more likely to break it and it's gonna be uncomfortable. Back to ergonomics again. Yes. So if you're limited with space, you've gotta have a blade equivalent to that space allowance you've got. So that's where you've gotta think, okay, what am I gonna be cutting? How much room do I have to move? If they're big trees or gum trees, you're just gonna cut a select branch that you know storms may have caused to semi-break or you just wanna keep it a certain look. Then you can go the longest blade for sure. But if you've got little bushes and you want to selectively prune, then you've got to go for a shorter blade. Yes. However, with Nita saying that, this might not be what you want to do. You might want to cut large, fresh branches. Well, this is the saw for you, the extra large tooth Zubat. So this is like your alternative to a small chainsaw. So you, we're talking about large branches um, and fresh branches too. So can I get this in five leaves? No, so lucky for you, it's just one. <laughs> easy decision, another easy decision. Oh, we try and help out here. Yes. Easy decision. So this one has a 33 centimeter blade. So, yep, still big enough to cut your bigger branches. And at the end of the day, if you're cutting a branch as big as what the saw is designed to cut, you want a longer blade or you're going to have, I mean, you're going to have good biceps, but they'll be sore. Yes. <laughs> So this is the Zubat large tooth on a rock hard dead bit of wood. Sorry, extra large tooth.
that fine too. So when you mean aggressive, you mean? It just means it vibrates more and it tries to, the teeth try to bite into that branch a lot quicker and a lot harder. So here I have is the Zubat flying tooth. <laughs> way better. The vibration didn't continue going on through to the handle. It was a lot smoother and easier cut. So here we have is a fresh branch from today's Nita's Garden. <laughs> this is why I have the extra large tooth Zubat on a fresh prick branch. <laughs> So quick, so easy. We now have the large tooth Zubat. So you'll notice that the teeth are starting to clog up the smaller the tooth size we go. Now the Zubat fine tooth. Do you see it took twice as long and more teeth are filling up with all those that sap and those breath. And now you're tight. Yes, I am. <laughs> Alright, my turn. Good try. And I might go a bit slower so you can see the cutting a bit slower. So that was the fine tooth Zubat. Really easy to use the fine tooth Zubat, slower on a big, bigger piece of wood that's got a bit more moisture like this, but if you don't have a lot of strength, the fine tooth is a very easy sort of use. Whoops, that's what happens when you pull too far. <laughs> So that was a large tooth Zubat. So given the choice for this particular piece of wood, I would definitely go with the extra large tooth Zuba. I just made, that for me felt more comfortable. The large tooth was still fantastic as well. Um, but yeah, I love the feel of this one for that particular one for me. So what I have here is the Zubat extra large tooth or small branch. Yes, it cuts fast. Sure did vibrate. <laughs> the large tooth on a smaller branch. In two seconds. <laughs> and then now the Zubat fine tooth. So I've got the Zubat fine tooth here and I'll start, um, I'll do it slowly. It's like butter, knife through butter. Zubat uh, large tooth slope. Zubat extra large. Fine tooth Zubat. That was pretty smooth and quick. Yeah. Quick. Yeah. Large tooth. That was pretty easy too. And the extra large tooth. Again, I felt the fine tooth Zubat was far nicer with this branch and the, the large teeth ended up leaving a bit of strings because they couldn't quite cut the last little bits because it is such a small branch. So fine tooth for that one. And so this one is a really sappy soft wood. So we thought we'd show you what they're like on this one. So this is a fine tooth Zubat. Super easy, super quick. Large tooth. 
even quicker and easier. <laughs> Extra large too, <laughs> gone. <laughs> so if it's very wet, very soft, big teeth do a treat. Zubat fight. <laughs> Zubat large teeth. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> it's totally fun. It too, <laughs> it's too quick, it's over. I know. Um, Zubat extra large. <laughs> it's, like, it's like one and a half. <laughs> super quick, super easy. Beautiful. So, we hope that that has uh, helped you with your decision as to which Zubat you should be choosing. If not, you're always welcome to leave a comment and ask us more questions or get in contact with us via our email or phone number. Um, we hope that the demos have helped. We hope that we've already put them in. If we haven't, they'll be just after I talk. I'm pretty sure we will put them in by now. <laughs> and if you liked our video, please subscribe if you have not already done so and hit the like button. And if you didn't like it, just, just press stop. It's YouTube. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I hope you guys stay safe and well. Bye. Bye. Uh, when it comes to wrong sauce. Oh, no, do this one. Nope. It's still the screws. Oh, it's in the wrong spot. Yes. Oh, let's do it again. <laughs> Alright. I was supposed to do two options. Yes! Plainly. <laughs> Oh! Mine for mine. Doesn't matter. Mine's easy. Blade length. There you go. It's a blade length. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know why we're laughing. No, they don't. That's why I'm like, I can't do this. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Should we tell them? We were totally organised. <laughs> like we have, we have, we have a customer who gave us this fantastic tip that we should have like this board behind the camera so that we know what we're doing and we are more organised for this video. We even put our names on it. We even, we even colour coded it and we still managed to talk about the wrong subject. <laughs> Oopsie Daisy. Never mind. Back to Sinead. Blade length. <laughs> has a curved blade. So curved blades are designed to cut above your head or below your waist. And that is because it's the way your arm naturally moves. So it's all about ergonomics when you are exactly. yes, <laughs> when you are cutting um, on an er on an erg <laughs> <laughs> We were nailing it. We did so well. <laughs> I was like, yes, you got it. An erg angle. <laughs> when you're cutting erg erg ergly, <laughs> er ergs. <laughs>